Bella Vista. It's time to talk about it. Today, I'm doing something a little different. I'd like to introduce you to my friend, and he had a secret that I didn't know about, Jan <laughs> Hagen. Jan is the president of the Bella Vista Radio Club. Jan, what's that? <laughs> well, it's our little secret, first of all. First of all. <laughs> but it turns out that it's not such a secret because the Bella Vista Radio Club is made up of 200 people, most of which are in Bella Vista. Really? And they are amateur radio operators. Uh, they have equipment that allows them to communicate not only with each other in the Bella Vista area, but across the state, across all the states, in fact, across the world with their amateur radio equipment. And the interesting thing about it is that with amateur radio, it doesn't require any infrastructure. Mm. So in this day and age of, of cell phones and computers and instant communications, this is a real unique kind of uh, communication form that takes uh, its uh, place from the early 1900s when people would use uh, Morse code, or we call it continuous wave CW, to communicate with dits and daws across the, the, first of all, the telegraph lines and then the radio waves. And there was nothing else involved. There were no repeaters or there was no cell phone, like I said before. So with the Amateur Radio Club, we communicate with a radio, a microphone, and we don't even need power because we can use a battery. And then we have an antenna. And it goes point to point from one place to another, whether that's across Bella Vista or to France or England or another place in the world. So you could be talking to somebody in France? Uh, I was just uh, yesterday, really? as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah, uh, it's very interesting to be in Bella Vista and to be able to communicate with people all across the world. Uh, I happen to do more of voice because I like talking to people, and I like to talk. Yes. But um, a lot of people will use uh, digital modes, uh, or they will use, again, the Morse code with CW, and that they have a little key here, and they use that, and they're very good almost making it sing, the way they can talk to each other with that. But I like voice, and I uh, had an interesting conversation. My most interesting conversation was with a gentleman from Scotland. Oh. And that, yeah, that was about, uh, about two months ago. And uh, he is on the very northern tip of Scotland on a little island about 20 miles wide. Uh, Isle of Man or, uh, or Jersey or Guernsey? No, it, it was one that I can't recall right now what oh. it was, but it was so small that I wasn't aware of it. Okay. And he says, nobody is. But he has a boat that, about 20 miles offshore. And anyway, his radio station was there, and he was telling me all about uh, his station, but more important than that, than that, his geography and uh, what his lifestyle is like living kind of remotely on this island. So it gives you a chance to kind of communicate with other people around the world. So it's the technology is there, but it's that human connection that makes it fun. Is this a lot like what the truck drivers, and maybe they still do, the truck drivers used to do? Does it have anything to do with CB? With, with CB, Citizen CB, Band C Radio? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, no, it doesn't okay. at all. Okay. Uh, and uh, if we recall all those movies from the 70s about CBers and truckers yeah. and all of that, that's a whole culture in and of itself. Okay. And uh, didn't follow too many protocols in terms of uh, proper radio use, things like that. But there are people who are amateur radio operators who started off as CB radio operators, and they kind of got tired of the craziness of that, uh, but they enjoyed the hobby, and so they became licensed, and they earned their license to become an amateur radio operator. How did you get started in all of this? What, what, why are you the president of this club? <laughs> well, my own personal story is a little interesting, but it's not unlike a lot of other people. Uh, I started off as an amateur radio operator in California, where I'm from, in the San Diego area. And this was in the late 70s, early 80s. And I uh, heard about CB and all of that, but that wasn't of interest to me. But communicating with other people was. And so I was introduced to amateur radio, got my call sign there, and uh, had a lot of fun with it. But like a lot of people, and I've heard this story over and over again, Life took over, mm -hmm. family, career, focusing on that, 
and I let my uh, amateur radio license lapse and uh, thought it was lost, but I always enjoyed it. And then we fast forward, moved to Bella Vista. Uh -huh. and um, You've been here a long time. I've been here since 2011 when we bought our home here. Yeah. And uh, here recently, the last about three or four years, got more interested in amateur radio again now that I had more time. And I hear this story over and over again as well. And um, I was introduced by a, um, a friend who uh, was the former president of the Bella Vista Radio Club, Glenn Kilpatrick. A uh, great guy. Uh, his call is WB5L. Um, mine is WB5JAN. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we got to talking because I saw his uh, antenna and told him a little story about back in the day. And one thing led to another, and I got back interested in it. And it's as fun as it was in the 70s and 80s. Wow, that, that is so cool. And you know, I, I know you pretty well. Um, you have a theater background as well. So this is why you're able to come on here and talk and <laughs> do all this incredible things. I can see why that would be a nice communication tool. Well, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, appeals to me again is, is communicating with people. Uh -huh. And um, we have a wonderful newsletter with our club uh -huh. uh, that uh, you can access from our website okay. that we have. I think maybe um, on, on the screen here, we're going to see something about your website. We may see second. that in a little bit. In and, a little and bit. you can access not only the website, mm -hmm. but then the newsletter. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a president's column on the newsletter. Oh, very good. And um, in that newsletter uh, and in the column, that I have a kind of a monthly column, I asked the question, what is the secret sauce of amateur radio? And uh, I said, well, is it all the technology? You know, is it, uh, and we'll talk about this technology because this is very old. That's yes. why I brought it. Yes. Um, but uh, is it that? Is it uh, exploring uh, contests? Because in amateur radio, there are lots of contests to try to reach each other and build up. You get points for doing that. Really? And we can talk about that yeah, in a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, or is it uh, finding out the newest way to communicate by, by communicating by something called moon bounce, where you bounce signals off the moon to each other and communicate? Oh, come on, through, Jan. Or through talk to people <laughs> on the ISS? on the International Space Station. So I, I posed the question, is that what it is, is the secret sauce to amateur radio? And what I wrote is, no, the secret sauce is actually other people. Oh. It's communicating with other people, making yeah. a connection. Mm -hmm. And the Bella Vista Radio Club is a wonderful club, over 200 members. It's the largest amateur radio club in Arkansas. Uh, and uh, it's made up of people from every background. We have professors from the University of Arkansas. We have former first responders. We have school teachers and school administrators like my former life uh, from all backgrounds. But what they have in common is their enjoyment of communicating and, and using this medium to do that. So that's the secret sauce communicating with other people. I like that term. So now we're talking about food. Why are you called ham radio operators? <laughs> Good segue <laughs> talking about ham. I like that. Well, you know, that it's interesting because uh, it's really a pejorative term to be a ham radio operator if you're talking about 1905, 1908, in that range. Because it used to be that the professional radio teletype operators uh -huh. uh, look down at anybody who didn't have a professional degree and, and uh, certification to do that. And what they really didn't like is when some companies would start to hire these amateurs. Okay. And they said, oh, well, they're, they're just amateurs. They, they're they're ham-fisted when they try to do the uh, Morse code uh, or CW. And so um, that term, ham, kind of stuck. And now we love to call ourselves hams. Do you we're really? We're amateur radio <laughs> operators, but we're hams also. You know, we have somebody in our studio audience that I believe is part of your organization. And he we're going to have him come right up here in a second. And we're going to talk to him. That'd be wonderful. Wouldn't it be great? Yeah, that is exciting. That's Mr. wonderful. Mr. Bob, where are you, buddy? He's going to be right here in just a second and uh, and I, I didn't know that Bob was part of Bella Vista Television so that is absolutely wonderful. He is one of our great 
always can count on camera people. Well, and he's a wonderful member of the Bella Vista Radio Club as well. So, Bob, first of all, what's your call sign? Hi, uh, Bob, WB0AUQ. And the zero is from the zero district. Uh, we have 10 districts, ham radios. Uh, Jan's a five. He used to be a six out in California. I uh, got my call in uh, Kansas, so I'm a zero. And that was back in 1970. And that's your original call, is that right? Yes, it is, yeah. Now, see, there, another thing to know is that you now, here recently in the past few years, have been able to get what's called a vanity call sign. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> of course, I have one of those. Oh, of course you do. <laughs> and a vanity call sign is simply a call sign uh, that is available uh, and not being used, and you could claim that one for your own. So in my case, um, WB5, uh, 5 the call area that he was talking about, and that's Arkansas, that is uh, Oklahoma, Texas, uh, a couple of other states. Uh, but I wanted something kind of distinctive at the end, and lo and behold, I found in the database that J-A-N, Jan, was available. Oh, man. So uh, that's why I am a WB5-J-A-N. But Bob has his original call, and there are a lot of people who love to hang on to that call. So, so you've been doing this since the 70s? Oh, yeah, 1970, 50-something years. Oh, my goodness. You know, I, I am amazed every day here in Bella Vista, but even here at the TV station, all these talents. And I just thought he knew how to operate a camera, and that was pretty much Man it. Man of many talents. Oh, my goodness. That is fabulous. What's your favorite part about it? Oh, well, I used to do a lot of restoration of the old vacuum tube uh, equipment. And uh, still, more, well, I had to downsize moving from Kansas down to a smaller place here in Bella Vista. Uh -huh. But my favorite is operating Morse code, the original is that digital CW? mode. Yeah. <laughs> and the um, neat thing about uh, Morse code is it's told to a lot of foreign countries. We all use uh, code and uh, what they call a Q signal. Uh, but it turns out most foreigners that uh, have amateur radio licenses also know some English, and you can communicate uh, quite well with Morse code. Another hidden talent that I now know about. See, that's what we do on Let's Talk About It. And I'm so happy to see you on this side of the camera today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, so what we're going to do, thank you so much. Uh, Thank we you, Bob. actually, I think we have another person. He can't come right now because I think he's in the control room. But I think Steve Little is yes. also one of your uh, yes, he's AB an five Y or AB nine Y N is his call letters. Yeah. And hmm. nine is a different area yet. Okay. From uh, Illinois. Illinois. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. I'll let you thank go you, back Bob. to your first job. Or your second, whatever it is. Now, isn't that exciting in Bella Vista? Yes. So many people have so many different talents and, and backgrounds of where they came from. That's it. Uh, one of the things I was going to mention, uh, Bob talked about an old radio and repairing old tube radios. Mm -hmm. Can we, can maybe we save that? We're yeah. going to take a quick break. Sure. And then we'll come back and talk about that. And we'll talk about this equipment in detail. And then you have some events. You have an event. Oh, that would be wonderful. Okay. That, that's great. We'll be right back. We're back. You know what, Jan? You were beginning to talk about uh, some vacuum tubes or something. When <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know these terms. I know a lot, but I don't know that. And Bob was here. Can you kind of yeah. continue with what you were saying? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Bob was describing working on these old radios. And the first thing to know is an old radio is a big radio. It might be even not the first ones, but the second generation would be something that would be probably as big as this table and about this high, 
filled with vacuum tubes and uh, would uh, take a lot of tuning before you could ever get on the air, whether that would be the Morse code we talked about or through voice. Uh, and those were, were wonderful devices. You could work on them. It's like an old car where you could change your own oil. Yeah. Where those radios, you could actually work on those radios uh, a lot easier. But we fast forward from that to what I brought today. Okay. And this radio let's, is... Let's uh, see if we can get a close-up here. You bet. And you can talk about it. This radio is 45 years old, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not new. I still use it. I use it when I go um, outside of, of my home and uh, operate remotely. Uh, and this radio is unique because look how small it is mm. compared to what I'm talking about, something that filled this table. And that's because there are no tubes in this. So this was the first solid state radio. Okay. And oh boy, everybody wanted one of these back in the day. This one is from, um, I believe it's 1978 uh, that it came out. It's one of the first one of this model. It might have been 1980. Uh, and uh, it's still humming along. Yeah. It still does its thing. You picked it up, I think, earlier and Yeah, it's, it's heavy, compact. but not like what these would yeah, be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's pretty condensed. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's what radios went to, something about this size when it was all solid state. Um, this radio could work with this microphone, and this microphone is an aesthetic D104. Right here. This is the coolest thing. It reminds me of some of those old uh, TV shows or radio shows. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and this is an iconic looking microphone. Uh -huh. A lot of guys, including me, have a microphone like this that I don't even use. Oh. This is my station sign gotcha. uh, in my, uh, at my station, uh, in my shack, in my radio shack, <laughs> uh, which is my little cubby downstairs at our home. Uh, and, um, but this was a go-to microphone that people used for a long time, very popular, and now it just looks so iconic for a microphone that you just have to have something like that. So Absol I don't even use it. Absolutely. You know? I like it. Yeah. I think it's cool. And you have a, an antenna over here. Right. And so let me let me tell you a little yeah. bit about this, is that uh, this whole setup uh, is something that we were going to talk about uh, uh, called Parks, parks in on the Air. Okay. I was trying to say Air Parks, Parks Square. <laughs> anyway. Parks on the Air. Okay. Parks on the and, Air. And uh, the wonderful thing about the amateur radio hobby is that you can go any direction you want with it and, and operate and do different kinds of things. Well, this particular thing, Parks on the Air, is something that I've enjoyed and a lot of people do. It's where people will take their equipment and go out to a state or national park and oh. they will make communication communications with the amateurs all over the world and it is kind of a competition. You want to kind of collect or hunt as many different parks as you can if you are a hunter or if you are somebody who is activating, you want to see how many different parks across the country you could go to. So if you love to travel or camp or do things like that, this is tailor-made. Yes. And go out and set up portable and operate uh, and all the parks have a designator, a particular designator, so you know which one it is. And so I'm closing in myself on, I'm real close to 2,000 unique separate parks that I've hunted where people are at, including my old haunts in Southern California. A lot of places I visited all the time, and I've talked to them on the radio. Yeah. So with this equipment, I take this, I take not this, but one like this, uh, and then this thing. And this is the antenna. Now this will go up, it telescopes up. So it goes up about uh, eight to 10 feet. Mm -hmm. And so this whole thing, it looks like it's a Rube Goldberg kind of arrangement, I'm sure. But uh, this is so that you can adjust it to the different frequencies. And with just this setting out somewhere in the park, uh, this on a picnic bench, a battery, to give it some power. I didn't bring the battery today. And a microphone, uh, you can talk to people all over from that park. So I either like to sit in my own comfortable radio shack at home and hunt these parks or take out this equipment to different parks here. And I've done that at Lake uh, Fort Smith uh, State Park and others to, to reach out to other people.
You know, I know you're an RVer too. When you go out RVing, and, and I know you go to parks, do you do this? I do. I will take this along. Of course, we like doing a lot of things. You yeah. know, we like to hike and do all those kinds of things. But at some point during a camping trip, I kind of set this stuff up. It doesn't take very long. And I'll get on the air and uh, active. It's called activating a park. And I might talk to people from any of the 50 states. Uh, and uh, <coughs> last time I was activating, uh, I had this one call and I had to listen to it. It wasn't as strong as others, but it was definitely there. And he was hunting me from Spain. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And so that was Lake Fort Smith State Park. And so I had a nice conversation with a guy from Spain. I was telling him about the park at Lake Fort Smith. So it truly is parks. Uh, that if I'd have had any concept of that, I would have known what to say. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. So let's talk. We have a we have a lot of information to show folks. Let's. Uh, I know you brought some pictures today. I did. I did. You have some events. Uh, we let's talk about that. Um, I know that first of all. How do they how do they get a hold of you if they're interested in joining the uh, organization? Thank you. If uh, somebody is interested in amateur radio or heard something about this and say that sounds like fun, probably the best way to learn about amateur radio and amateur radio in Northwest Arkansas or Bella Vista is through our website. Okay, and uh, that is on the screen yeah, right Bella now. Vista radio. Uh, club.org. It's mm -hmm. all one word, radio, uh, Bella Vista Radio Club.org. Uh -huh. And on that website, you'll find information about our club meetings, about the hobby itself, uh, about uh, how, if you are interested in getting started, how you can get started. Uh, on that uh, website is our newsletter, and I think I talked about that yes. in our previous segment. Uh, and a lot of information there. And we have club meetings that we meet um, every month. And uh, we usually have a guest speaker, uh, and we have people from different backgrounds, and of course there's always food. Yeah. Oh. Can't have a good meeting without food, That's right? it, you know? that's it. So um, it, it's a, an easy way to get into the hobby. It's a very welcoming club. We take new people all the time, and uh, we don't want anybody to feel by themselves. So. Do you also have a Facebook page? We have a Facebook page, and okay. you can access that through the website. Okay. There's a link right there to do that. Okay. If you want to ask a question, uh, you can ask a question, and our email is on that website. Okay, and, and I believe that uh, might come up here in a minute, too. And it's info at yes. bellavistaradioclub.org. Yes. So you just add, add info at. Yes. And uh, you can ask a question, or, hey, I might be interested in this. Can you tell me more? Somebody will get back with you. Um, Okay, I think you have some pictures here we do. in a second, and, and they'll um, be up on the screen. Uh, what we're going to talk about is field day. Okay, let's and, do that. And field day uh, is a, a yearly event. There we go. Um, and uh, it's going to be at Metfield Skills Park. It's coming up here on June 24th. Mm -hmm. And we've asked uh, a few dignitaries. Our, our mayor, Mayor Flynn, will be there with a proclamation. Uh, will be proclaiming uh, the week of the field day activity as Amateur Radio Week mm -hmm. in Bella Vista. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also have Tom Judson from the Bella Vista POA. Mm -hmm. uh, the event's going to be at Metfield Park, a part of the POA. He will be there. And we have one other dignitary. We have J.B. Portello, <laughs> who, who will be there, who uh, is uh, not only involved with the television station and several other things, and I'm so thankful that you're going to be there to join us uh, for I that. I just love new adventures. I can't wait. I think it'll be interesting. We need to have a drink and talk even more later. <laughs> well, uh, and everybody is invited to this yes, event. Yes, yes. And let me talk about what it is Okay, for a let's second. do that. And we may have some pictures Yeah, if we have pictures, we'll, we'll kind of narrate oh, there, that. Oh, there you go. There was from a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, that's a banner that was right there at Metfield, uh -huh. you know, because we're, we're not doing this behind closed doors. We want the public to be aware and to stop by. Let's to get see the what we're doing. newspaper there too. We'll, absolutely, I'll, I'll help absolutely. You do that. Yeah. And uh, if the pictures continue, we'll see. We have uh, uh, members of the club who are operating. You can see there at Metfield Park where you have the cabana there. Mm -hmm. We set up right on the picnic tables there, uh, and uh, they'll have more than one station. We'll have a station for phone, talking voice. We'll have a station for CW, and that picture is CW right there. Mm -hmm. That's the Morse code, and you can see his keyer right there. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to have a station that is called Get on the Air. 
And what by the way, see how it's dark? Yeah. The field day goes 24 hours. Oh. It's a 24 hour event. So at three in the morning, everybody's welcome, but probably won't be there. No, I uh, won't. But <laughs> members of the club are operating. Um, and there are other clubs that operate because every amateur radio club uh -huh. and, and all their members take part in field day. Gotcha. And it's to practice. Food. Oh, and remember I talked about food? <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, food is an important part of field day. Yeah. Uh, at 6 o'clock on that day, we're going to have a nice um, kind of potluck. And uh, we have uh, club members who are really good at doing that. So a time for fellowship, for, for visiting, for operating. And in this, that picture we just showed, there were a couple of people who had joined us having heard about it from things like this, yes. and were interested in amateur radio and came to learn more about it. But the whole purpose of the field day is to practice emergency communications, mm -hmm. something that would be called upon if, for instance, cell phones went down through a natural emergency uh, and there are no uh, repeaters for police or fire. That actually happened during Katrina. Mm. The first few days, the communications were by amateur radio operators or hams because all they need is this, 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 and a battery. And they can communicate and, and get everybody who needs to communicate with each other uh, communicating until regular communications are restored. So field day is an opportunity for us to kind of practice operating in the field mm -hmm. in a portable operation. And it's become kind of a contest, too, because uh, you, the more people you can contact, the more kind of points you get. Sure. With the uh, American Radio Relay League, ARRL, who sponsors Field Day. So uh, it becomes kind of a, a unique blend of contest, of party, of practice of amateur communications for, for uh, emergency communications, and it's just a whole lot of fun. It sounds like it is. Yeah, and so uh, I would absolutely invite uh, everybody who might be interested in seeing what this is about to come for field day. Let's put it up one more time where it is, and, and th there we go. Thank you, and this Andy, will be again so at thank Netfield you. Park. Uh, if you have any interest in this, uh, you are more than welcome to attend. We're going to start our festivities at 12.30 with um, the mayor and uh, with UJB and, Tom. and with Tom Judson uh, to kick things off. And then at 1 o'clock, the communications start and it goes for 24 hours. A um, little hint, you might want to either get there at the beginning and you can see the, the opening uh, or get there somewhere around 6 o'clock when the food starts breaking out. So oh. we'd love to have people come and join us. I Abs think that'd be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, we have just a few minutes left, maybe a minute. Is there anything else? Uh, we've just talked about so much, and uh, I, I am intrigued with this parks thing. Well, you know, and it's just one of all kinds of activities. Okay. Now, yeah. Some people in the club uh, are really into MCOM. Uh -oh. And that's kind of what we were talking about with the field day. That is short for emergency communications. And uh, some are connected with the spotter network for weather. Uh, and uh, some people are connected uh, uh, with helping out first responders. And MCOM also helps out sometimes when you have a parade or a 10K and you just need local communications. Uh, members of our club provide those kinds of services. So emergency communications. So weather, weather you say, did you know that I have a weather station in my backyard and I project weather up to NASA? Did you know that? I didn't know that. Now, I have a little weather station as well, but yeah. you have me beat. I don't project to NASA. It's, so. it's through Master Naturalist and we monitor well, that's what's interesting. going on all over the place. So we we're going to go have to have a drink and talk about this. <laughs> we could talk for a long time. We I can know. because it's just, you're, you're such an interesting person. Oh, well, bless your heart. And I uh, am so glad you came today. Thank you. Thank you for having me you and bet. talking about the uh, Bella Vista Radio Club. It's a great group of folks. Uh, it's more than just radio. It's the people. There you go. Okay, Bella Vista, we've talked about it, haven't we? <laughs> we certainly have. And I am so excited to be bringing you things like this. If there are any of you out there that actually uh, have other exciting things like this, <laughs> let me know. And I'll give you, we'll, we'll, we'll let the world know. 
How about that? Sounds great. I'll be tuning in. All right. Okay. In that case, I guess it's time to sign off. And we will see you again next month. Uh, we have a really unusual show next month. I'm not going to tell you anything else, but it's going to be a lot of fun. The camera people in particular will be interested because, anyway, that's enough. We'll see you next month for Let's Talk About It. J.B. Portella with the Bella Vista Community Television signing off for today.